Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad Wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd Allahumma inni a'udhu bika and ushrika bika Wa ana a'lamu wa staghfiruka liman a'lamu Ahabati fillah In a beautiful hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He emphasized the importance of good manners, righteous conduct. And as we've said on countless occasions, you have positive results by being positive and being good. And may Allah bless us to be better and forgive us of our many shortcomings. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. But after Tawheed, after the, the, the emphasis of monotheism, you know, of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, we have to also be conscious of having righteous manners and righteous moral conduct with people. And you'll have positive from that, bi'idhnillah ta'ala. And more importantly, it'll be an act of worship and bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He will raise you and give you and make that a part of your character. We all want to have good manners and have that as a part of us intrinsically. And may Allah bless us with that ameen. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَا مِنْ شَيْءٍ أَثْقُلُوا فِي مَيْزَانَ مُؤْمِنٍ مَا مِنْ شَيْءٍ أَثْقُلُوا فِي مَيْزَانَ مُؤْمِنٍ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ مِنْ حُسْنُ خُلْقِ وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يُبْغِذُوا الْفَحِشِ الْبَدِيءِ the Prophet ﷺ said, There isn't a thing that weighs heavier on the scale of a believer on the Day of Judgment than good manners. And verily, Allah hates sinful and wicked speech. One of the benefits we gain from this hadith that the, uh, uh, the Ahl Hadith mentioned is that this hadith, because the Prophet ﷺ said, Ma min shayin athkalufi mizana mu'min. He said, There isn't a thing that weighs heavier on the scale of a believer. There isn't. So here the Prophet ﷺ negated that there would be anything else that weighs heavier on your scale of righteousness. But we know that, of course, Tawheed precedes that. How do we understand this hadith? We understand that the Prophet Sallallahu here was referring to those uh, like mu'amalat, you know, those deeds to deeds and actions or uh, conduct. And this comes after, of course, Tawheed, after the, the monotheism, after the worship of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala alone, because someone could have potentially defects in their characteristics, maybe even bad m manners you could might, might even say and but they do have a correct understanding of Tawheed and they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone but it shows some deficiency in their Iman and some deficiency in their Tawheed because if they are truly realizing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching them and uh, aware that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, that Allah loves good conduct then they would practice that so when they have this deficiency it means they yes they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but they're deficient they have some deficiency in their iman and they have some deficiency in their tawheed because this is a, is how the relationship of ma'asi or sinfulness and tawheed there is a relationship you can't distinguish just push one aside and, and, and this because the person who truly understands Tawheed truly and is practicing Tawheed then they won't be doing disobedience to Allah so it shows us that when we are sinful and we know we're sinful that's a deficiency in our Iman that's a deficiency in our Tawheed how? what is the proof you may ask? the Prophet Sallallahu said in the Hadith of Jibreel Qala Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when asked about Ihsan and notice the hadith that we're talking about. We're talking about husn al khulq. So the word husn, uh, uh, you know, talking about righteousness or, uh, uh, um, yeah, righteousness or like piety and, and, and goodness was used in that hadith. 
So the evidence that there's this relationship that I'm talking about, the Prophet Sallallahu said, when asked about Ihsan, what does it mean? The Prophet Sallallahu defined for us in the Hadith of Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, قال صلى الله عليه وسلم إن تعبد الله كأنك ترى فإن لم تكون تراه فإنه يراك The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it is to worship Allah alone. This is what Ihsan is. To worship Allah alone as if you see Him. But because you can't see Him, know that He sees you. Again, in ta'budullaha ka'annaka tara. To worship Allah as if you see Him. Because you can't see Allah. You see the evidence in His creation. Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. This is beautiful out here. It's beautiful. And it smells beautiful. And it feels beautiful to be out here. That's evidence that my Lord created this. But you don't see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you see evidence in His creation. In the, the, the majesty and the beauty and the wonders of His creation. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. His creation. So, so since we don't see Allah as the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith. It is to worship Allah alone as if you see Him. And because you cannot see Him, know that He sees you. That's what Ihsan is. So it means it is worshiping Allah with completeness. Pure ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Knowing that He sees you. Because a lot of times we come to Salat and we're careless. We just pray in a hurry, especially if we're by ourselves and we're not in the Jama'ah or something. Sometimes you're cooking, you got business to do, you got this, so you just pray. But that's not necessarily actualizing what we what we need to actualize. And ta'budullah ka'annaka turaq ka'annaka turaq fa'in lam tu'kun turahu fa'innuhu yaraq And if you don't see him, know that he sees you and likewise this comes with the actions of obedience to Allah and and avoiding disobedience which is also a part of ibadah and taqwa so that you stay away from sin because if you really actualized Tawheed you really knew you wouldn't do that you would not in front of the Muslims if, for those who are Muslim you would not go in front of the Muslims and bring your girlfriend or the Muslim sister to bring her boyfriend. You would feel shame. Or those who do those kind of activities and do sinfulness, out when they're caught, they feel shame. You don't want people to see what you're watching on the computer or what you're watching on the TV. You don't want that. You don't want to hear people, you don't want people to see and listen to what you're listening to. Maybe you're listening to Pac. Maybe you listen to 50%, 50 Cent. Maybe you're listening to this one, Rihanna, G Beyonce, whoever. You don't want the people to hear that, to, to know that you do that sin. That's something you keep to yourself. And this ibadah that we're talking about, when you know true Tawheed, you know that Allah sees you when you're doing that. You can't get away from Allah. So it shows us that we're afraid for the people to see, but the person who has true taqwa, they're afraid because Allah sees. That's true ibadah and true iman. And ta'budullaha ka'annaka turah fa in lam tukun turahu fa innu yarak. Know that he sees you. Going back to the initial hadith. Ma min shayin athkulu fi mizan a mu'min yom al qiyamah min husnu khulq. So we said that there isn't a thing that weighs heavier on the scale of the believers than good manners. Wa inna laha yubghidu al fahish al badi. And the Prophet ﷺ said, And verily Allah hates sinful and wicked speech. Meaning that the person who's argumentative and they're cursed, they easily, it amazes me. I know many, alhamdulillah, many tulab al-ilm, many from all over the world. Even just recently, one particular brother, and I hold him in high esteem. He has a lot of ilm, talab al-ilm, here. And he's not... And not to, this is not to belittle, but he's not a native speaker of English. And it shocked me the other day when he meant, he actually cursed. 
he actually used a cuss word. I, I'm, I don't use cuss words. And that's not to raise myself up, but anyone who knows me, they will never hear the S word or the F word from me. I may joke and do a, a little twist or spin on it, but you'll never hear those curse words. That's something I quit, I think, before Islam, you know, pretty much, using that more or less, more or less. The point is, Allah hates wicked and sinful speech. And part of good manners and good conduct is, is guarding that tongue. So sometimes our brothers and sisters, even when they're speaking about people from Ahla uh, Bida, that they transgress the bounds, they go too far. Those blankety blank tablikis, those blankety blank Sufis, those blankety blank, no, that's wrong, that's Tajawas. That's Tajawas, that's going overboard. Then blanket, you know, we need to calm. Yes, you might have a way of speaking to your brother that you, uh, have you, you go back to your street language, you have your way, ways of relating. We're not talking about that. But we always have to be careful of the sinful and wicked speech, going beyond the bounds, cursing, using foul language, because Allah hates that. Because verily Allah hates wicked and sinful speech. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from my Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam. Ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.